All right, this is a topic on loving your neighbor and what it means to what it means to truly love your neighbor. And I'm going to go over two scriptures. I'm going to try to make this uh, video as short as possible. I have one right here on, on my device. I have another one in the Bible. That way I don't have to flop back and forth because I have both of them right here in front of me. Uh, remember your King, King James Bible. Your King James Bible. For that's the only proper English translation. Amen. So, uh, Matthew 22, Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40. Then one of them, then one of them, which was the Lord, which was a lawyer, asked, asked him a question, asked Jesus a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now I'm going to point out one part of that verse that the hyper-grace Christians take out of context. And whenever we read it in context to them, they accuse us of being a legalistic or basically accuse us of being a legalist. When if we were, if we're a legalist for reading this in context, then Jesus himself is a legalist. We already know God is a legalist. God himself is a legalist as well. So judging by their accusations, if I'm a legalist, I'm glad I'm a legalist because at least I know I'm aligned with God's will. If I'm if if that is what makes me a legalist for reading this in context to you, then and then I'm doing God's will. Because God Himself is a legalist. Praise God. So this this is the context of the on these two hang all the laws. And they think the, the term hang means basically kills all the laws, destroys all the laws. Well we all know that Jesus says that he came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it, right? So um He He also said right below that uh, verse he came not to destroy law destroy the law but to fulfill it right below that one he says that the whole law will not pass away until heaven and earth passes away the whole law will not pass away until heaven and an earth passes away obviously you still have to honor your father and your mother honestly obviously committing adultery is still against god that hasn't passed away. That hasn't been fulfilled. You still have to not commit adultery. That law has not been fulfilled. It's still, it's still here until heaven and earth passes away. Do not bear false witness. That's still a law. It has not been fulfilled. And it will not be fulfilled until heaven and earth passes away. Thou shalt not steal. That's still a law. You still have to obey and keep that law until heaven and an earth passes away. Thou shalt not covet. You still have to keep that law until heaven and an earth passes away. Are you putting faith in that law? Are you saved by the law? No. You are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus Christ is what you're saved by and faith through that blood. But you still have to keep the moral laws, such as thou shalt not commit adultery and so forth. For it was not fulfilled upon those two laws. Now, if you keep those two laws, then you are also keeping those other laws because... And we're going to get into that. If you stick with me, we're going to get into that. I just wanted to get that 
tough love out there for those for those that are hardening their hearts and those that are not, that are not humble and do not actually listen but yet their heart is so hardened that just upon these just upon me saying uh, half of the stuff that I just said they'll just click off of the video video uh, right then instead of listening uh, to me getting my point across amen because I don't I don't just give love I give tough love I give tough love see the love of God is tough to those that are of the world but it's not so tough to those that are not of the world it sounds gonna it's gonna sound tough to you it's gonna sound like it's not even love at all that's why I call it tough love to the world but to you that actually or letting the, that actually let the spirit lead you is not going to sound so tough to you amen praise god so thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two two commandments hang all the law and the prophets i'm tired right now but i feel like i feel that like if i can't go to sleep if, if something is keeping me up, then I'm going to do God's will regardless. I'm going to pray spiritual warfare. See, uh, a powerful prayer warrior or the prayer warriors that actually are willing to pray past midnight, if that's what it takes. If you're, if you're going through uh, spiritual warfare and the devil is attacking you, attacking your sleep, a pow the most powerful prayer warriors are those who are willing to stay up and fight fight through a uh, prayer even past midnight if, if that's what it takes it's not midnight obviously it's 9:40 at night so um they think that on on these two laws hang all they think it means hang hangs them on the gallows and and it means basically kills them is what they think but really what Jesus meant by that is those two laws are greater than the other ones. It's not saying that it that it destroys the other ones. He's just saying those two laws are greater than the other ones. And if you're keeping those if you're if you're keeping the uh, other laws then that is proof that you're truly loving the Lord your God with all your heart and it's and it's, and it's also proof that you love your neighbor if you keep the if you're not committing if you don't commit adultery, if you don't covet, you don't steal you don't bear false witness. You honor your father and, and and your mother. If you're doing all those all those things, that's proof that you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and strength, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. But if you're not doing all keeping all those commandments, then that's proof that you're not keeping the greatest commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart soul and mind and strength I normally I say strength as well and love the neighbor as I so so this one is 22 Matthew chapter 22 verses 35 through 40 the other one that backs me up on on this right here on the context that I'm reading in Romans chapter 13 verses 8 through 14. Romans chapter 13 verses 8 to through 14. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now this is where it gets into hangs all, all the other hangs all the other on, on those two laws hang all the other laws, right? This is where it gets into how you can fulfill those other laws. So for this for this, how how you're loving loving uh, your neighbor as yourself, and how you're loving one another. For this, you will not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment. It is briefly comprehended in this saying, and what it means by briefly comprehended, meaning that's all those other uh, those commandments that were named out. If you're if you're keeping all those commandments, 
that is proof that you love your neighbor. And I'm going to get into that. And it is, and pretty much, hold on. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So let's go, let's go again. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You go up to verse 8 again. It says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And what is the, what is the moral law? And this is just the moral law. There are some there are laws that Jesus has already fulfilled on the cross. What is that? The sacrificial laws, the laws of what foods you need to eat. Um he's fulfilled those laws on the cross. Praise God. Now is a pig still unclean? Yes. Does that mean you can't eat it? Uh, if you're giving God thanks, no, you can still eat pig. You can still eat pork. That doesn't mean it's not unclean because pigs are, are one of the most dirtiest animals in the world. They're one of the most dirtiest animals in the world. And there's no doubt about that. But do I still eat bacon? Yes. It's just not one of the most healthiest foods in the world. Praise God. And that's why God commanded uh, Moses to, to write one of those laws down, to write that law down. It's because he loves us so much that he doesn't want us to destroy our destroy our body by putting a bunch of unhealthy food in our body. That's why he made that law. He made that law out of love because he doesn't want us to destroy our bodies with unhealthy foods. That's what that is. Praise God. So... That's how, and just this Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14, that, that actually tells you the context of Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40. That tells you the context right there. Praise God. And you're not going to see very many preachers preach on this topic. And they're going to try to beat around the bush. They're, they're, although they know that the context I'm reading in is in is the truth. Because they're greedy. And they, they want to get the attention of the world and gain the whole world. They don't want to lose their, their subscribers, their followers and all that. They're going to try to beat around the bush kind of like Joel Osteen does. Kind of like Joel Osteen does. He beats around the bush. They just don't preach on that topic. They block that topic out. And they just cherry pick around it. They try to cherry pick and pick around the scriptures, what they do. But I don't cherry pick. I don't cherry pick. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear rather than, rather than what your itching ears want you to hear. Praise God. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. Shalom.